Good morning and welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Scott Barlick with Coima Coima Barlick. Lots of red on the board this morning in grain and livestock futures trade with a few exceptions over in the wheat complex. And really kind of a risk off day continues here in the markets, right? Yeah, it still is overflowing from Sunday night's news and, and what's going on with uh, the health of banks and you just really hope it's not a domino effect that we start to see how, you know, find out more banks that are in trouble. So uh, as a commodity trader, now we got to put our uh, economy hats back on and right. figure out the health of the bank. You know, all of the uh, oddball things that we have to worry about is is in the agriculture business. And, and that's one that just kind of comes up and slaps you in the face. It's, it's a pretty, pretty big uh, gut check that uh, is unforeseen. And that's why you see so much movement in the markets and, and uh, negative trade, you know, especially on markets that are at some higher prices. Um, easy for them to kind of take a little bit of a breather, take some of the risk off. So, so that is the correct term to use is a little bit of a risk off here to see. So now every morning you come in, you, you kind of keep an eye, what's the Dow Jones doing, the S and P's, uh, what's the interest rates doing? Those are the markets you have to look at first, uh, when you have news like this happen. And so that all appears to be okay. We're going to, today, we're just going to have to take it a day at a time right? Uh, with as the news comes in and hopefully there's not a bunch more news that comes in. So um, got a, a cousin that works for the FDIC uh, in New York and I, I know she hadn't had uh, about eight hours of sleep in five days. So I can only imagine uh, what they're going through right now. So yeah, but the funds were already selling in the grain complex prior to this announcement. And let's talk about the corn market, even though we got confirmation of China business this morning, about 24 million bushels. It had been rumored, I think, even last week, maybe even the week before. So kind of buy the rumor, sell the fact. And where is corn finally going to bottom here? Because like we said, the funds have continued to liquidate. They sure have. It uh, it hasn't found a spot to hold yet and sure doesn't act like it's ready to uh, just turn around and get back to some higher prices here. You know, you still have the regional basis issue. Uh, basis gets a little stronger and uh, where I'm sitting right here in northwest Iowa, just because uh, it's hard to get your hands on it where it was a little bit tighter and uh, in some heavy corn usage areas. And and then you talk to somebody in Illinois and they can't believe what we got for a basis out here. So it's a little bit right. still that regional issue there. But um, we had some uh, gaps in the charts. It was kind of hunting for a little bit. There's a 595 gap in a July chart. Uh, wondered if that's something they were hunting for. Um, not sure how I feel if they want to fill it or not. What actually happened? So uh, you, you might actually be a little stronger if you don't go fill it and turn back higher for the time being. Um, some, <coughs> sometimes if it gets filled, um, you know, things can get a little weaker from there. But e even for somebody that thought that the corn market could break, have a little correction here, I'm starting to wonder that maybe this is uh, uh, getting about low enough for now. We're starting to bank that, yep, we have got a big crop coming. It's, it's coming. Uh, and no problems. We know there's going to be some issues somewhere in the country, some growing problems somewhere. We're going to hear about it. And, and I look at that 1.3 ending stock number on the last report, that doesn't feel like an over full pipeline to me. So I'm wondering if we don't start to hold a little bit here and any kind of uh, news that we get with some growing troubles or, or news, it, it could get us a little bit of a rally here off the lows. I'm not thinking long extension rally. We're going to have to have right. some pretty serious stories if we're going to really continue to, to further that rally. Well, and corn got drugged down by the wheat market and wheat is finally looking like it. It's gotten low enough that we're seeing what just a little short covering bounce there. And how much will that help? Yeah, the funds have been so short that wheat for a long time. And you got that macro news out yesterday and we had a little bit of a spike low, some some uh, definitely a lower trade on the wheat early on and re <coughs> excuse me, recovered throughout the day, even getting right. double digits higher. So uh, might have trapped a few people, some of the longs that were hanging on uh, in, uh, from the other side of the market uh, might have puked a few of those out. In all of these markets, you see some of those weak longs get me out. You know, you get a lot of those calls on Monday morning or, or Sunday night. Hey, get me out. This macro news is a yeah. little bit uh, too much to handle. So, so those kind of markets can carve out a low that way when you get those last few uh, people to puke and maybe then we can turn it around as long as macro and our markets kind of leave us alone here. Do you think the soybeans then will maybe get back above the $15 mark once this washout is kind of done or not? 
I kind of feel like they will. They're going to want to get back to uh, uh, being ornery with not getting enough acres and and talk about some of the fundamentals there. And, yeah, and Argentina's feel, crop continues yeah, to but, decline. Yeah, so, I mean, it feels like as fast as they go down, that's they can move that fast uh, back up. So um, I don't think that their party's done yet. You don't see me putting in buy orders here today for sure, but uh, it does feel like we could get some recovery on all of these grades. So the cattle market, obviously, as you had mentioned, got cut up in the macroeconomic concerns. We were probably due for a little bit of a correction there. So is this a healthy correction in an otherwise bigger bull market? Scott, is that how, you, how you're viewing it? I think so. I, I it, Yeah, like you said, it, it needed a little correction. And um, some of the cash prices have been okay. Uh, you know, I mean, you're getting those mid 160s prices and um, still getting some some meat bids on some of the muddier cattle. But uh, it's time for cash to maybe lead. That would be what what would be ideal for a bullish market is they yeah, get a little break in the futures. And then that cash stays higher than the futures and maybe tries to be a little bit of a leader there to try to hold it on. So I think the fundamentals are still OK. Uh, the show lists are not overwhelming. Uh, in my opinion, and they're not going to be. So I think the numbers are going to stay tight and, and that's going to just continue to be a factor all the way through. But when you're up near record prices and you get yeah. macro news, that's a little negative, pretty easy to, to see. Okay. We're seeing a little bit of a break here. Some of that long liquidation is probably going to happen just because we're at some pretty high levels. But once the dust settles, um, I think Ultimately, it's going to be okay and stay strong. I just think it has to. It's going to be too tight on numbers to, to back up too much. And we should get some confirmation of that again here in a reality check with this Friday's Cattle on Feed report, don't you think? Yes. Now, this is the, the part of the cattle cycle that we love the Cattle on Feed reports because we kind of feel like we know they're going to be friendly and they're going to stay that way for a while. So uh, we're kind of where you look forward to the next one uh, to give us that little shot in the arm again, a little reminder that things are tight, uh, just kind of looking at that big picture of it. So, You bet. What is your cash call this week on cattle? You think we'll be steady again or where? I could see a few, uh, you know, lower bids, you know, a dollar or two lower, and they're probably going to get a few yeah. bought, but um, they're, they're, there's not going to be an over amount of cattle that have been backed up, not getting marketed. So I don't feel like there's going to be a bunch of panic trade hitting that lower because they think it's it's in. So we're we're not really seeing the grilling season yet. I don't think anybody's really in the mood to be grilling yet. Um, so I still think that's yet to come. I think everybody's getting wound up and ready for that. So when that happens, I think it's going to be a great pop in demand. And I think the cattle are going to be desired. So I, I still think it's a, a strong market here for, for sure. The, you know, getting into May, I feel like this demand is going to, going to really help us out. And hog market uh, took a step back yesterday, again, caught up in the macroeconomic climate. But uh, where do you see that market head in the rest of the week? Yeah, that market, it gives you a one good day, one big rally. Right. Say, Here you go. Oh, the, the bulls and the lungs get friendly and uh, that's about all I can muster. And then it uh, it's just kind of whittles away. So still hearing the the lighter weights story across the hogs and, and that there could be indeed a little bit of a hole for April, that they're going to be tighter on numbers. So so the supply in the short term looks like it should should help us out um to get a little bit of a you know at least a stable market i don't know that it has to rally significantly but uh the fundamental guys are the ones that are really telling me this market could could get a little bit of a boost here in the spring yet okay we'll see if the funds come back in and start to push this thing or not thanks so much for joining us scott varlick with quema quema varlick and that is markets now